Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to do a little video that some of you have been asking for, a little update on what happened with our write-off courtesy car, the car that we lent out to a customer. They were involved in a hit and run crash and obviously we raised money for them through a GoFundMe. You all very kindly donated and people just asked, you know, what's the update? And I have got an update. It's probably not the one you're expecting. It's a bit of a sad story, really. Um, probably not in the way you're expecting either. But for those of you that haven't seen the original videos, you want me to see them now because I have taken them down. Um, I'll give you a little kind of recap. But basically, we had a customer who would bought a car from us for about, I think, three and a half thousand pounds. They had an issue after a little while. I think they're actually going to come back in for an engine management light, which was um, nothing major. It drove fine. I can't remember what it was. But in the meantime, He'd managed to lose a couple of wheel nuts, so brought it in and we kind of hastily gave him a car off the forecourt and said, take that, um, I'll put it on the insurance database now, which I did, and gave him a print off saying that it was on the MID, um, but you'll need to have it covered under your third party insurance because we don't have courtesy car, but you know, this way you'll be covered. So that was fine. Uh, the chap took it. This is a kind of like partner, man and woman. I don't think they're actually married. For the argument's sake, let's say the wife had bought the car, but the husband was driving it around and he had this problem. And I said, we'll bring it in. So he gave him a car and took it away. That was that uh, until a few days later when he called and I sort of said, how, how are you? Are you everything okay? He's like, not really. Um, the wife had been hit, involved in an accident and the car was written off. She was in hospital, et cetera, et cetera. Um, she'd fractured her hip and lots of problems, as those of you who've seen the previous video would have known. Um, which was awful. So I sort of said, anything I can do, let me know. And it was just kind of a, you know, sorting out all the police information and everything then because uh, it was a hit and run. So she'd been pulling out of a junction, car had driven into the side of her, T-boned her basically, and then she'd gone across on the driver's side. She'd gone into a lamppost on the other side of the road. And the driver and passenger of the Focus involved had run from the scene. Now at the time, the police thought they'd probably run because they were drunk and there were other things found in the car, paraphernalia. Uh, they might think they were under the influence of something else. Uh, but, and I think I said that in the video and I think I titled it, you know, um, my customer was hit by a drunk driver or something, but um, I don't think there's necessarily any proof of that. I, they have caught up with this person who is driving now and they are being charged for driving with no insurance and for making off from the scene of a serious injury, collision, um, and possibly other things. Um, but yeah, necess not necessarily any factual evidence to say that they were intoxicated at the time, but I don't know how long after the accident it was that the police managed to catch up with them. So obviously if someone's drunk or under the influence of something else, they might want to make it away from the scene and not be found for a day or two later until they can say, well, there's nothing in my system now and the police can't prove it, can they? So I don't really know. Then obviously we picked up the car from the kind of impound yard where it had been taken to a local reclamation place. Um, I kind of phoned around, which you might have seen in the previous videos, just to find out where it was. And I thought probably it was a place just up the road, um, which it was. So there was a bill for about 450 pounds for that. Um, in fact, they sent me a letter and it said, you know, you, your bill is £300, whatever, plus VAT, plus we're going to start charging you £25 per day now to store this vehicle. Um, or we will send it off to the scrapyard and that will be the end of it. I didn't know if I'd still be liable for the charges. So I thought, I'll just go and get it picked up. We brought it back here. We looked at it. Absolutely awful carnage on that car. Um, yeah, no wonder the woman ended up in hospital, but I think probably that golf saved her life, to be honest, because it was a hell of an impact. The car was like a banana. Um, and while we're checking out this car, we found like the child seat inside. And um, in fact, I think it's even still down here. The little Disney Pixar car child neck pillow, um, all of which I've offered back, by the way, they didn't want. Um, and it kind of just brought it home how serious it was and how bad it could have been if kids were in the car. So that's why I said, look, I'm going to start a GoFundMe um, and put the first donation of 100 quid in, saying, look, can we raise 250 quid, see if we can get them a new child seat? Because, all right, the insurance should cover it, but there's going to be costs in the meantime. And it's just nice to kind of rally around someone from the community and do something for them. And overwhelmingly, you guys 
raised six and a half thousand pounds by the time I, you know, turned the taps off on that and stopped the donations coming in, which absolutely blew my mind. Uh, blew their mind as well. Obviously, we did a video where I phoned up the chap and sort of said this has happened, and he was very grateful. And um, yeah, it was really nice and a really kind of feel good thing. I felt really good about it, and um, I think a lot of you, obviously, the people who got involved as well, did. It was something to feel good about, and that was great. That's where things start getting complicated and there's a lesson in this and it is completely my own fault but there is that old saying as well that no deed goes unpunished and uh, I'm getting punished really. So um, after we did the videos we raised the money we let the people have it and they were grateful etc that was great. Um, a few weeks later we actually had them both come into the garage and um, they just wanted to say thank you. She was back on her feet, although with crutches, one of the legs where she'd been hit on the driver's side by the car was like three times the size of the other leg, but obviously they'd pin things back together and she was able to get moving again, which was excellent. They did say that um, the police had asked for me to take the videos down because they had an ongoing investigation, which was fair enough. Um, the only thing I had was a text message supposedly from a police officer and I said, okay, that's not fine, I will take that down. Um, and that was that. I'd left the GoFundMe open and I think money was still trickling in, so that was great. In the meantime, I'd had a Facebook message from someone that I didn't know, a lady. Um, I didn't know what the contents of the message was because I think I'd missed it for a little while and it was in my kind of other's inbox. Um, so when I opened this up and read it, um, it was from the mother of the driver of the Focus that had been involved in the crash. And she wasn't very happy with me or our customer who was driving the car. So this message said, hi Joe, just want to make contact with you about your GoFundMe for the lady in Burnham on Sea. She should be totally ashamed of herself for this GoFundMe page. Uh, as soon should you without knowing the facts that you're assuming was a drunk driver, but happens to be my son is not drunk driving. Also, she pulled out in front of him. I've gone to the police about this matter as putting down drink driver and putting in, putting in my son's name through the mud, which is total lies. She has raised £6,000 for a, a karcher. You are ripping people off. Good-hearted people are being ripped off through lies, assuming that she was totally in the right, which is wrong. You've misled people that without the full story, the only thing my son did wrong was leave the scene of an accident, which is in the police hands. He suffers very badly with anxiety and depression and panicked. And he's only been driving for just over a year. Oh, bloody hell, who in this day and age doesn't suffer with depression and anxiety? I certainly do. But... I wouldn't run away from the scene of a crash where someone was unconscious and potentially could have died. Anyway, this goes on and on. I said, you know, I'm not ashamed um, at all and neither should she be. I don't know the facts, but all I've gone off was what the police had given me. Um, and regardless, if my customers had been involved in the accident and they were the ones that had run off, I would have raised money for her son as well. It wasn't about, you know, naming and shaming or anything like that because I didn't name anyone. I had been given his name by the police and his address and everything along those lines to deal with the insurance claim. Now, if I wanted to, obviously, I could have shared that and been like, this is the person. I could have found his Facebook page and put all that stuff out. But obviously, that, that is not what I'm about at all. That's in the police hands. I'm not looking for drama. I wanted this to be positive. But unfortunately, here I was sort of defending myself, for having trying to do something nice. And in the end, you know, she didn't see things from my point of view. And I said, look, if I'd named him, I'd understand that you would be concerned. But I haven't. All I've done was try to do a positive thing for these people. And it seems like you're annoyed that I haven't done that for your son and that you're feeling some kind of secondhand guilt or whatever it is. And I understand it's an awkward situation and it's, it's a bad situation to be in regardless. Um, but that's not my fault. I can still do something positive without it being a negative against you and, and you know, I'm not going to be threatened with you reporting me to the police because obviously I don't think they'd be particularly interested. They're probably more, more interested in the person who's trying to get in touch with me via my personal Facebook page to threaten me. So that's part number one of where this was beginning to become a bit of a know, tiresome ordeal. But secondly, where this has become more of a problem, really, is where my trade insurance comes into play. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I had put that car onto the insurance database, the MID, and said to them, you'll need to use your third party cover from your uh, comprehensive insurance. If you've got fully comprehensive insurance, 
A lot of them will cover you to drive another car as long as it's insured by someone else, but only third party. Not all of them do. Certainly if you're a younger driver, it probably won't cover you. Let's say under 21, 25, I don't know what the rules are, but it's an additional condition now on a lot of insurances. So not all of them will have it. It used to be the case that all of them did. Not all of them do now, so you would need to check. We took it on their word that they did have that, and um, therefore you know they could drive it under that. But it was a bit of a case of, well, it's insured on our end. Just make sure you've got the third party. And obviously I was taking a risk with the car. The car had only cost us £1,750, so... I wasn't drastically worried. Um, I don't want to lose that. I can't really afford to lose that sort of money. But, you know, it wasn't like I'd given them a 10, 15,000 pound car off the forecourt that I was owing money against or something like that. Um, and obviously I wanted to help them out and get them a car on the road. So um, that was all fine. And uh, I, I, in fact, I'd phoned up the insurance company that had insured the car that crashed into our customers and let them know about the claim. And they sort of said, uh, okay, well, we'll be in touch. We'll do our investigation. And I assumed that in that scenario, with the police investigating them and them having run off from the scene, etc., that, that it would be deemed that they were definitely in fault. You know, they were the ones that had caused this accident. Um, and it would get dealt with, and then the insurance gets sorted. But it seems like, because my insurance was coming around for renewal in about a month's time, let's say six weeks, um, the insurer of the other car had actually put a claim in against me because I was the only other one that had declared any insurance. So my car was insured. And my broker had received this thing saying, we've got someone making a claim, saying you're involved in an accident. Now, whether that was, it can't have been the driver because he wasn't insured. It was insured by someone, it would seem, but I guess it wasn't the driver. And the only other person that could possibly be making a claim is the passenger, perhaps. Or I wonder if it's something to do with British telecoms or something because a telegraph pole was hitting the same thing so maybe they're putting a claim in I don't know because I can't get the details and they won't really give them to me they won't even say who it is that's putting this claim against me but what it means is that I needed to produce the customers my customers insurance document that had that uh, additional section that said they had the third party cover so I could pass it on and then my insurer would just simply say here you are, this is the person who was driving at the time, this is their insurance policy, please forward it on to them, and they will deal with it. Here's where I made the big mistake, I didn't get a copy of their insurance. Like I say, I took it on their word, never happen ever again, ever we're going to lend out a car again in the future, then we are going to have to get a copy of the insurance. Now I did speak to my insurance broker and said, can we not just get courtesy cover? And his option was, yeah, of course you can, you can, but the options are that you have a courtesy car, the customer goes ahead and has an accident in it, it goes against our no claims, and it costs us uh, in the long run. So not only will we see an increase in the first year, we will also see an increase for the next four or five years until we're back to the point where we were with the no claims, because I've got maximum no claims, and one of these claims would take about half of your no claims bonus away. So it would take four or five years to get it back to where I was in the first place. Now, if I'm only loaning out cars of a couple of thousand pounds and I'm risking losing that completely, but the customer will be covered for any damage they do to anyone else, then if a car accident happens and I lose a car and it costs me a couple of thousand pounds, that's where the kind of liability ends. I've lost a couple of thousand pounds, that's a shame. You've got to pick yourself up and move on from it and just accept that as a risk, but I won't have any damage to my insurance going on. So. It seemed like if I was going to have a few courtesy cars out at a time, that probably the best way to do it was to say you have to cover it on your own insurance and just take the risk on the cars. So what the insurer's recommendation was, was just speak to the customer, get them to send them the document, and um, or in fact send me the document and a copy of their driving license, and then I could send it over and that would be that dealt with. Um, obviously, the investigation's still ongoing. I, you know, I still couldn't really get my head around the fact that this claim was going against me when the police hadn't even made a decision on who was responsible yet. But from my understanding, from what my broker is saying, is that it gets very complicated when the police are involved and it's a criminal matter. The insurance company still want to tie everything up and uh, there's a, basically not necessarily a claim against me. I'm not having paid out from my insurance for everything, but there is a marker against me saying that we've been involved in an accident somehow. And until we can pass that along to whoever was involved with actually driving, 
then it's going to hang against us. So got in touch with uh, the customer, sent lots of messages saying, could you just swing in and whatever? And the gentleman involved had said, yeah, that's not a problem. I'm sure I can do that. A week goes by. Have you heard anything? No. So I did a little chase up and say, could you drop the stuff in? And he said, what is it exactly you want it for? So at this point, I'm starting to think, oh, this is actually going to start getting awkward, I think. And I explained, you know, it's because your partner was driving at the time and it was meant to be covered by your third party cover that my insurers need it because my renewal is coming up. So it's going to affect me immediately um, before the whole situation gets resolved. It might not, it might get resolved before your renewal ever comes around. So it never costs you a penny. And ideally, it will be found in your favor. So it's not going to cost you anyway. But what I was met with was a lot of kind of like trying for them to try and reason and say, well, we weren't a responsibility. So we don't want to hand over our insurance documents because we feel like that's admitting guilt. So I tried to explain and say it's not admitting guilt, it's just passing on the relevant information that was in place at the time. Who was driving? What was the insurance? And all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's going to affect my insurance. And my insurance is expensive anyway. My insurance is about £5,000 for last year. It was likely to go up anyway, as we've talked about on this channel, with insurance prices going up anyway. I was expecting it to go up. But with a claim against me, losing half of my no claims bonus, it's going to go up an awful lot more. So if you could just help me out here, let me have those documents and I will pass it on. Worst case scenario, it does cost you something in the short term. You know, I feel like we, we, my community, my amazing people who watch this channel have raised six and a half thousand pounds for you for covering exactly these types of costs. But I haven't taken anything from that. In fact, I've lost 1,750 pounds on the car, 450 pounds on getting the car recovered here. All of my time and hassle dealing with it and then I did get maybe a couple hundred quid back from scrapping the car um, and maybe a couple hundred quid from YouTube. So at this point, I'm, you know, let's say 1,800 quid out of pocket that I'm never going to get back. It, regardless, maybe, maybe at some point I might get paid out from the other insurer if this gets deemed that it really was their fault. But at this point, you know, I don't really know. Anyway, this went on and on until my kind of broker was desperately phoning me each day saying, have you got these documents? Have you got these documents? Because otherwise I'm going to have to give you a really high quote for this year. Um, at which point I tried phoning this chap and he wouldn't answer the phone. So I thought, oh, actually, sales document from the person that actually bought the car, which was his partner. I phoned her and um, was met with, oh, oh, hello, quite happy and jovial. And I said, oh, hi, it's Joe from Barry Motors. And instantly the tone dropped. She said, oh, I'm busy now. Oh, okay. Uh, is there any chance you could perhaps give me a call back when it suits you? Uh, bearing in mind, I'm like about three or four days away from needing my insurance renewal, and it was like, well, I'm looking after my daughter, and I, I don't, I don't really know what it's about, and I, 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 you know, I don't, don't want to be talking about it. I'm looking after my daughter, and that's that's far more important to me. And I was like, okay. I didn't say you had to do it. I didn't ask you at any specific time. I just wondered if there was a time that you could perhaps get back in touch with me. Um, and she said, oh, well, uh, I can't remember, but it was, she had uh, uh, a huge attitude. And I sort of said, I don't understand what the attitude's about. I was just trying to get some information from you regarding the, the incident that happened. I need to f do some paperwork. I'm asking you to kind of help me out here. And she just hung up the phone on me. At which point I just thought, I'm, I'm never getting this stuff. They're just going to try and wriggle out of it. And it doesn't matter what we've done to help them. They're just going to throw me under the bus. It, it you know, they agree that it would be covered under their insurance, the, the, you know, but they just won't give me the documents in order to help me out. What's daft about it is if it was, if they could just hand me the documents, I would send those, that would get passed on. And then this whole investigation, which I've had a letter now from the police saying that they are taking this chap to court, um, probably in only about a week's time, I think. This all might be dealt with long before their car insurance ever renews. So it's never going to cost them anything. But if it did, I'm the type of person, if they came to me and said, look, you know, the money really helped out that we had before, but it's going to cost us an extra 500 quid, a thousand pounds for our insurance. In the meantime, while this gets sorted out, I'd be like, don't worry, I'll cover it. I'll cover it for now. And when it all gets sorted out and you get reimbursed, let me have the money back. But obviously they just don't, they don't want to help me out at all. They were happy to take the money. Um, but yeah. I'm not looking for sympathy here. This is my own fault. This is my own fault for not getting these documents up front in advance and for trusting people. And I shouldn't have done. And I don't feel bad 
for the fact that I've kind of set up a GoFundMe and you guys have really generously poured your money and kind wishes in. And I don't think you should feel bad about it either because they obviously do need the money and they did need the support and we've done a good thing. So we can all feel really good about it. The fact that they then turn around and kind of don't want to help me back is irrelevant to what we've done, I think. So don't feel bad about it. I'm sorry if you might feel a bit upset. I don't for the money that I put in for the haven't arranged it because I think they did need it. And that was the most important thing. This is a separate issue to do with me. And it is my own fault, really. So, you know, how mad can you be? I shouldn't have given them the option to be able to kind of throw me under the bus like this. So lesson learned. It's an expensive lesson because, like I say, I've lost, let's say, £2,000 on the car. And while my insurance was uh, around about £500 per month last year, because for some reason with trade insurance, they, they spread it across 10 months, not 12 months. I think I explained that in another video before, and I said my insurance is about five grand and it cost me 500 quid a month. It's not spread across 12. They spread it across 10. Don't ask me why, but that's how they do it. And um, it's now £900 a month. So we've gone from 5000 to £9,000, um, which, you know, almost doubled. It's a ridiculous amount. Um, it would have obviously been far less. Let's assume it would have been £6,000. Um, have it increased generally without this claim against me. So what am I? Five grand out of pocket. We raised six and a half for them. Uh, yeah, I, there's not, not much I can do about it. The saving grace is that I've managed to have got all the details together. I've sent it to my broker who is sending it on to the insurers who are making a claim against us saying, these are actually the people who are driving. Um, they are insured. Here's the vehicle. Here's the registration of the vehicle that they do insure. And it wasn't really anything to do with us. We'd lent it out and it was meant to be driven on their third party. Now, as part of that investigation, they're all going to have to talk together and figure this out. And we all know what insurance companies or any kind of corporations are like. It's going to take forever to sort out. But my broker, Ashley, who is amazing, from UK Global Group, by the way. So if you are looking for car insurance, Ashley is great. I will put a link somewhere, maybe in the description. I'll put a link to them where you can find them and chat to them. I'm hoping to get him on the channel in the future for some advice. But he sort of said that they should all work it out. And then when it's found, deemed that um, it was them driving it, not us, or it wasn't involved with us, and it was on their insurance, then I should get a rebate. Whether it be the full amount or not, I don't know. Um, but in the meantime, I'm stuck paying £900 a month for my insurance now, almost double, um, when the price of everything else is going up anyway. So... It's a sad turn of events, really. I'm lucky that, you know, we can afford it um, just about. Well, I say we can afford it, but, you know, we're working hard to try and get regular decent profits. And this obviously won't help on top of everything else. But that's just the way it goes. I'm not complaining. I'm not looking for sympathy. As I've said before, I'm not really looking to kind of badmouth them either. Um, some people deal with things differently, don't they? They just panic worried they're going to get in trouble, worried it's going to cost them money, perhaps, you know, any difference it would have made in their insurance, £500, £1,000 is more substantial to them than £5,000 losses to Barrow Motors. You know, can't really, it, well, so you can't hold it against them. I don't hold it against them, but you would, it would have been nice to think that they would just say, here's the stuff, be open and honest and whatever, considering everything else considering how amazing you guys have been. So yeah, I mean, that's where we, that's where we stand now is I'm paying much higher insurance. Um, I've got the, uh, the mother of the other driver angry at me now. Oh, I forgot to say actually, in amongst all of this, me asking for the details, the guy asked me for a job. He wouldn't give me the insurance documents in order to help me out and said, oh, have you got any work going though? I'd love to work more locally. I could not believe what I was reading. In fact, it's not on here because it's on our work phone. But I said, sorry, you've had an accident. We've raised money for you. You won't give me the insurance documents that you agreed you would and that shows that I wasn't, what, well, Barrow Motors employee wasn't driving the car. You were. And you want me to give you a job. Uh, absolutely beggars belief. I don't know what to say. But anyway, a lot of you have asked for the update and that is the kind of raw and honest update on what it is. I do have this kind of motto that I say to myself, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. You can do someone, I, think, I must have said it in other videos, you know, 
someone comes along and says, oh, could you have a look at my car for me? Oh, only once a fan belt or something, you know, I'll chuck that on, don't worry about it, you know, just give me the 10 quid for the belt or whatever. And then they'll go away, you haven't, you haven't done them a nice favour and only charged them for the parts or not charged them anything or put a set of wipers on that were on the shelf for free or something. And they'll come back and say, oh, that's, that's damaged this now. That's scratched my windscreen now. So can you, you need to fix that now. You know, why is it that no good deed goes unpunished? You do something good for someone else, and then all of a sudden you're responsible for everything else that happens on from that. I don't know. But let this be a lesson to you. If you are a car trader, make sure you get those documents right. Don't be an idiot, Mike. Me, I'm just not that I'm an idiot. I know I should have done it, but I just get a bit lax and just too comfortable in lending cars out to people, trusting people. That's my problem is I'm too trusting. And just like, yeah, no worries. I'm sure if there's a problem, you'll give me the documents. If you say you've got that third party cover, that's fine. It's on you anyway, really. Turns out it's not because it's going to end up on me if they haven't got insurance. So, yeah, if anyone's borrowing a courtesy car now, they have to give us the paperwork up front and keep it on record. And that's the only way we can do it. Anyway, on a more positive note, if you do want to help out with a really, really good cause, Jack, who is a local lad, five years old, who's been diagnosed with a really rare cancer, neuroblastoma. Uh, we are, via my raffle website, Feel Good Competitions, running loads of competitions, including winning a Corsa VXR, winning a thousand pounds cash. There's also a really nice watch. But what I think you should get involved with tonight is our raffle in conjunction with Jack Butel Racing, who is racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup of Great Britain. You can win two VIP box tickets at Brands Hatch this weekend, the 11th and 12th of May, to watch the British Touring Car Championships, as well as all the supporting races, including the Porsche Carrera Cup of Great Britain. You get fed, lunch, and breakfast. You get free drinks all day. You get this VIP box, so even if it's raining, you get to sit in there in comfort. You get two tickets to access the track as well. And Jack's team, Toro Verde, have also generously donated runners-up prizes of two entry tickets into the races as well, so you can go and check out the whole racing for the weekend. Tickets are only five pounds. There's only 150 available. There's only just over 100 left. I will put the link in the description and the top comment of this video. Get involved because it also helps out that really great cause of helping Jack get the treatment that he needs over in America. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs>